Welcome everyone. My name is Jen Seal and I want to welcome you to today's practice. Um, today I'm going to talk about yoga, just what yoga is. I get asked this question so many times, like what really is yoga and why should we do this practice? And I will tell you that my very first experience, my very first class, I had absolutely no clue what I was in for. I didn't know what yoga was about. Um, it was a power yoga class. I walked in and it was really hot in there. I had no idea it was going to be hot. And I had no idea what to expect. My idea of yoga was really that it was a physical practice. So you did some poses that I couldn't pronounce and uh, supposedly made you be, you know, more flexible, more balanced, more, you know, less stressed. And I knew that maybe meditation was a part of it, but maybe not. But anyway, so whatever you think your definition is of yoga, it's going to be different for, for everyone. Okay. The physical practice of yoga is where a lot of people come into the whole of what yoga is. So yoga is really more of a holistic body practice, mind, body, soul. The word yoga itself actually means to yoke, which I thought was pretty funny. I was like, Oh, all I could think was eggs, but to yoke means to unite, to bring together. Okay. So we're not only working on the physical body, although that is one main component, right? We have the physical body where we do the, the physical practice, but we also have to be aware that we have a, a mental mind, a mental body, right? And we've got to try to tame the mind stuff that's brought going on and it's a big a big part of yoga is taming the mind which in yoga they call chitta so the mind chit so the practice of yoga helps to cleanse the mind and cleanse the thoughts and makes us more aware you know of what we're thinking um, and how we talk to ourselves so we can act to get rid of any kind of toxic thoughts or or stress that we're creating for ourselves with these thoughts so we get the physical body the mind body we've got our emotional body right the heart center um our feeling body so we have to be aware of how we feel when we come to our yoga practice we're asking ourselves to drop in that sense of awareness about our felt experience what what you know where feelings show up in our body and and how to draw attention to them so that we can help clean you know cleanse them or help them right or pacify them and then we have our breathing body. <laughs> In yoga, we call pranayama. Prana means energy or life force. So we know if we're breathing, we're alive. If we're not breathing, we're not alive. So this prana, we want to try to engage and understand and appreciate this prana, pranayama practice. It's practice of breath work, of breathing, of kind of being a participant in our breathing. If we're not aware that we're breathing, our body's going to breathe for us. Thank gosh, right? But when we begin to draw attention and awareness to our breath, we can begin to work with it also to help reduce stress, tension, anxiety, fear, um, all those other things. It can help us prepare for something difficult as well. It can bring ourselves to a sense of calm. So there's also the higher intellect. Um, which are the intuition, you know, that sense of knowing you're just not quite sure why your body or your mind, it's not really mind, but why you're feeling a certain way about something that intuition can be squashed. Okay. By the mind stuff. And so in clearing the mind stuff and creating a strong physical open body and bringing attention awareness to breath and being in check with our emotions, we are able to better listen to our intuitive center. Hear or hear, call it or hear your higher consciousness, your third eye. Um, and intuition's huge. Intuition, it's kind of like your heart, what your heart wants, what you know is right. And lead you to your life's purpose if you really listen. So it's super important. So yoga as a whole is treating the whole self. Okay. And I could go on and on and on and on and on about this. I geek out about this stuff. I think it's so cool. The yoga philosophies and way of living a yoga lifestyle is just, you know, it's so 
it goes beyond it just extends way beyond what i'm just talking about now but anyway you've got why we come to our practice why do we come to our seat why is it important to be present so we can tune into all those things so today's practice physical practice and then you're like gosh jen you talk i'm sure some of you may have fast forwarded me that's totally fine i can't see you i don't hold you <laughs> i don't hold any grudges if you're not there already come into a comfortable seat Place a black blanket or bolster underneath you if you like to elevate your seat so you can have a nice tall spine. I know you hear me say this all the time, but alignments, I geek out on that too. We want you to have a nice, um, nice posture. You can take a nice deep breath in and just roll the shoulders back and down as many times as you'd like. You can bring your ears, you know, your, your um, ears to your shoulders and just kind of like subtly move your neck side to side and maybe even left to right forward and back. Pause anywhere that feels good to pause. So this practice today is going to be a physical practice of just movement of kind of slow fluid movements to open up the channels of the body, the energy systems of the body. Um, so there will be some movement based up and down. Um, if you're kind of having issues with mobility, this might be a little bit difficult, but we're not going fast, so you can modify it as you need to. Let's just bring our hot palms together to our heart space. This is Anjali Mudra, heart mudra, okay? Anjali means heart. So we are bowing to our heart center, that higher intuition. Like we want to get there, okay? And just take a couple of moments to have some nice deep breaths in and out. Open uh, in through the nose, out through the mouth. Feel the full expansion of the breath in the lungs. Into the rib cage, into the front side and back body. Opening the mouth, relying the toxins, stress, negativity, anything in there that you may feel is not serving your higher purpose comes out through your mouth. It's a great metaphor just for cleansing and detoxifying. Anytime, you can do it anywhere. You can breathe anytime, anywhere. And now keep breathing, but pause to think just for a moment what it is you need to cultivate. What, what is it you need moving forward? What, what way of being do you need moving forward for, for the rest of your day? Morning, afternoon, evening. What do you need for yourself today? Make it one word, positivity, kindness, compassion, grace, patience, strength, courage. And take a nice deep breath in, let it out. And just drop that into the seat of your heart. Open your eyes and bring your hands down. Take a moment just to be. So close the eyes, relax your face, your jaw. I want you just to get a sensation, just kind of do, hit those points, hit the mind. How is your mind doing today? The quality of your mind and your thoughts. There's no judgment. Drop into the space of your um, feeling body. How do you feel today? No judgment. Just observe. How's your breath? What's the quality of your breath today? Does it feel fluid and soft or does it feel a little heavy and maybe staggered, short? And then come to the physical body. How do you feel physically today? What do you feel tense, tight? It might be aching muscularly in your joints and your organs. And just bring a little kindness to the whole self. Big breath in, let, let it out. Let a smile grace your face as you stay present to this practice today. Take the block out. Keep it to the top of your mat if you need it. All right. So, <clears throat> just extend the leg back and extend the left foot back and just Pull the belly to your spine. Just kind of let your um, hips stretch here. 
You can bend your knees down if you'd rather, or just, you know, tap your knees down. Keep drawing the thigh back. Pause. Bring your knees down, take the knees wide, hips back towards your heels. Arms can be extended forward, elbows can be on the mat, just a little child's pose here. Again, another reverent position to start your practice today. Over time, if you do this on your own, two minutes, two minutes is a good time to sit in quietness and do a little body check-in and whether it's seated like we did or in child's pose, just feel which one feels better for you. Your arms can even be behind you. You can turn your head to a side. So what's gonna allow you not to be distracted by your body? Is it sitting or is it in child pose? Is it laying on your back? Those two minutes need to be for you. And now bring your hands, come to all fours. You're gonna thread the needle left arm up and then thread it through underneath the right hand. Draw the hand back more closer to your face. Maybe you have wrist top fingers or palms on top of each other. We're breathing all the while, just a tiny little um, back bend stretch or a twisting stretch here. And back up to the all fours, reach your right arm up and thread it underneath the left. Place the left palm on top of right, or just bring the fingertips closer towards your face and provide the support there. A little stretch for your outer shoulder. And come back to center, so we're not staying any, in any pose for any really long length of time. Again, come to that high plank pose. Press those palms firmly down into the mat and extend yourself back to downward facing dog. Widen the feet here, pedal the feet, press the heels down. Feel free to get sassy in your hips. You can push the hips out. Keep drawing the belly in, tailbone up towards the ceiling so knees are slightly bent. Shoulders are down away from the ears. Bend the knees a lot, push the belly, push the floor away, and look back towards your toes. Again, if this is any sort of impingement for your shoulders, widen them a little bit, give your shoulders and your neck some space. And begin to press the thighs back. Downward facing dog. These crazy names, right? Downward dog is fine. Adho Mukha Svanasana is its other name. <laughs> look forward, you know, walk forward. However you get there, however many steps, no matter. Feet are wide, belly, right? Your knees are bent, belly draws towards your thighs. If this does not feel good, bring your, your elbows to your knees and let your head hang low. Otherwise, elbow to elbow. You need to sway right to left, left to right. Let the arms come down towards the floor if that's more comfortable. And notice if your fingertips do grace the floor, you know, can you place your fingertips on the mat? Can you put your palms on the mat? Just notice that we're gonna do this later and see if you create some length in the back of your thighs. And begin to press the thighs back if it feels good. If it's any strain on your lower back, though, keep your knees bent. Shake your head a little yes and no. And slowly, again, if you have any issues with your back, you're gonna come to a flat back first and then lift up. Otherwise, you can just roll up one vertebra at a time. Bring those feet back together. Inhale, arms reach up. Pause here. Hands can be together or apart. You're just pushing your feet down into the earth, extending the fingertips up towards the ceiling and pressing your, your sternum forward. And slowly, arms by your sides. Come back to standing. Shoulders roll up and back. Okay. We're gonna move through some sun salutations here, just three of them, all right? So come to the top of your mat, which is about six inches from the top. Nice big inhale here. Exhale, swan dive, so arms come down, and as they come down, hinge back, bend those knees, and then fold in half. Halfway lift, hands towards the floor, bend your knees a lot, step your right foot back, then your left foot, or vice versa, whichever you want. You're gonna step it back on the opposite one next time. Knees can come down, lower yourself all the way down to the mat. Tops of feet press back, elbows hug in, cobra. Exhale, curl the toes under, press into your knees, lift the butt, and use your arm strength to press up, okay? You wanna build big triceps or nice triceps, you can do it that way. Just breathe here for a moment or two. Reset yourself in your down dog. 
and step forward with whichever foot. Again, you're gonna step with the other one. If it takes you a couple of times, you get to swing it up there, that's okay. Step the left foot forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Opposite foot steps back. Lower yourself down. Tops of feet press. Roll up cobra. Exhale, back down. Curl the toes in and press up and back. Downward facing dog. Pedal the feet. If you like. Otherwise, you could just bend both knees, push away. Enjoy. Just keep checking in with all parts of your body. Check in with your palms, check in with your arms, check in with your shoulders, check in with your neck. Lift the left leg up. Draw it forward, step it forward. And then bring the right foot to meet the left. Halfway lift and fold. And rise. Again, exhale, fold. Halfway lift. Step back, opposite foot. Lower down. You can start to go up a little higher here if you'd like. With Cobra, your hips are still on the floor. Press up and back. Downward facing dog. One breath here. One breath out. Right leg lifts. Step it forward. Look forward. Left foot meets right. Halfway lift. And fold. And rise. And fold. Halfway lift. Step back, opposite foot. Lower down. Roll up, Cobra. If you want to come to up dog, slide your hands a little farther down towards your breastbone. You can press up, straighten your arms, lift your thighs, lift your hips. And pull the core in, downward facing dog. Finish your breath here. One more full breath in. And out. Left leg lifts, step forward with your left foot, step forward with your right foot. Halfway lift and fold. Adding on, just come here, right into chair pose. Arms can be slightly extended forward or up over biceps by your ears. This is so much harder for me. It creates tension in my neck, I don't like that. So I keep it forward or I come to goalpost arms. You might want to keep your belly in towards your thigh or in towards your center. Weight in the heels, sink back as low as you can. Good. For five, four, notice your butt, kick it in. Three, two, palms together, one, and fold. Halfway left, we're gonna step our right foot back, left foot back, lower down. Cobra or up dog, downward facing dog. Right leg lifts. Step it forward, all the way forward, widen the feet, crescent lunge pose. Back knee can be slightly bent to begin, right knee bent at a 90 degree angle, toes are soft, and arms again, create space for your shoulders and your neck, you're welcome to look up. You can just straighten the back thigh if that feels good, building strength and stamina in the legs, make sure you fire up your glutes both right and left. One more inhale. And exhale down. You might be finding you're building some inner fire. That's good. You can come halfway for chaturanga if you want. And just come look, lift right up into up dog. Or go all the way down and come to cobra. Downward facing dog. Left leg lifts, look forward, step it forward mindfully. Help it if you need to. Widen your legs. Press the lunge. So you know what you did on the other side. So you know what you can do on this side. You can bend the knee, bend the knee, engage the glutes, look up. Gives you the opportunity to just feel the sensations, all the things going on in your body. Take one more breath and float down. Left foot back, lower, or come halfway, right? <laughs> Always the option. As you get warmer, this might feel better. <clears throat> Downward facing dog. Right leg lifts again. Step it forward. You're just here, crescent lunge. Good. 
right hand to right hip. Take it into a nice little side stretch to the right. Keep the right thigh now moving back, heel toward the mat, bend deeply in the right foot. Breathe into the left side. Left arm reaches up and forward. Right arm reaches back. So you can help this. If this feels awkward, like it really does for me sometimes, I take my hand to my outer right knee and use it to just move into the twist a little deeper. Be mindful if that's right for you. Bring your hands to your heart. Hinge forward, hook your left elbow over your right thigh. Press the palms together. Again, use the pressing to twist. Stay here if you'd like, or here's an option for that block. Place it inside your left, inside your right leg and reach it up. All the muscles are engaged here. You can bring your hand behind you as well. You can look over your right shoulder or look down. Be mindful not to place too much pressure on that block of the floor. You're trying to use the legs here to stay stable, building strength in your legs. One more breath in and exhale it down. Foot slides back, lower. Up dog or cobra. Down, we're facing the dog. We know where we're going now, right? Left leg lifts, keep the hips square. Draw the knee into the belly. Look forward, shift forward. Just slide and glide that foot up. Slide and glide. Reach up, crescent lunge. Be mindful of your breath, be mindful of your neck. Where is the tension? You see there can be a lot of tension here if you create it. Good. Bring your left hand to your left hip. Side stretch to the left. It's gonna be a little bit disorientating. You're welcome to look down if you'd like. Really feel the extension though. Try to really reach the fingertips toward the left side. And bring it back to sit on the in breath. Reach it forward and left arm goes back. Again, I'm gonna grab the outer part of my left knee to really find a little bit deeper of a twist here. And then bring your hands to your heart hinge, hook, press the palms, looking over your left shoulder or looking down for more stability. Option to open the arms using that block. Lift and reach. I always like to tuck mine behind me. It's better for my shoulders because my shoulders are tight. Stay deep in the left knee. Keep the left knee hugging in towards the midline. One more full breath. And down. Slide that foot back. Do your vinyasa. It just means flowing with your breath in the way that feels right for you. Do your process. Woo! All right, one more. Right leg up. Step it forward. It should be getting easier, right? Lift up to crescent. Spin the back heel down. Warrior two star your way back is to you. Extend the arms. Right thigh is drawing back, right knee for left thigh back, right knee forward. Look over your right fingertips. You're a strong warrior. Pull the belly in towards your spine, drop the tailbone down. What are you here to conquer today? What goals are you trying to achieve? What small things you need to achieve them? Going into battle for it, right? You're going to defend. Straighten your right leg, reach it back. And re-bend the knee and windmill your feet down again. You can go to right to down dog if you if your arms are tired. This can be a lot, but it is building strength and stamina. So even if you're tired, it's okay. Left leg lifts, pull it in, shift it forward nice and gently. I don't want to be a stampede here. Gentle. No, really. Spin your back heel down. I always thought yoga was supposed to be kind of like dancey and pretty and you know, sometimes it's just not. <laughs> it's all about finding alignment in your body though. So left knee over your ankle, right thigh draws back. Find the distance that works for you, arms reach. Sure they're even and you're not overextending but you're not like just hanging out either okay engaged your muscles are hugging to the bone i like to say that relax you're just breathing into it
and then straight in and release. Rebend, bend lower those arms down. Cartwheel, windmill, whatever you'd like to say. Lower, last one, and down dog. Woo Look forward to the top of your mat. Walk there. Bring your feet outer hip width. Here we go again. Here's a ragdoll pose. So hug elbow to elbow. Bend your knees slightly at first. Belly draw the thighs. Let your head be heavy. Look back towards your mat. Back into your mat. Sway. Lift the toes. And then release the hands. And notice, are your fingertips touching now? Can your palms touch? So my palms actually can touch this time with a little bit more leverage. So I know that I'm stretching the back of my thighs a little more. It's great. Slowly roll yourself up. And reach shoulders. Just shrug your shoulders a little bit. Move your neck gently around and come towards, just come to Tadasana. Do what you need to do to, you know, I, I sometimes just need to shake my hands, shake my feet, just reset myself. So we're gonna come into tree pose, but we're gonna come into tree pose in a different way, okay? It's kind of like stage one of tree pose. So this is sometimes destabilizing for people because you're, you know, out of balance. You just gotta be counterbalanced. So let's just do this. <clears throat> Bring your hands to your hips. So square your hips off, push your foot firmly down into the mat. Bend your knee forward, just bend the knee so you're up in your tippy toe and put the toes just behind the toes of the left foot. Now, again, don't let this get loose. I want you to engage your glutes. So you get a penny between there or that or something and you don't wanna drop it. And just feel, this is sometimes easier for people. Once you feel you're settled, bring your hands to your heart. You can then begin to turn towards the right, right? And then you can go to the right and feel what's going on. My ankle becomes a lot more, you know, engaged to keep me stable. There's a lot, it's, it's a, there's a lot that this foot is supporting right now. Make sure your glutes are also engaged, your knee is hugging the bone. And then feel free to play here. On your thigh. I know very few people who can just put their, their heel into their upper thigh without pulling it up. So just take a moment to undo yourself, pull it up there if you want. Keep the glutes squeezed right on the toes. And then once this feels good, if you can stabilize here for a while, even if you sway a little bit, you're welcome to add the arms. And this might add more stabilization for you, right? Right? And practice a number of positions. And don't waver. Wherever you're looking, just stay stable. Looking forward, looking down. When you begin to turn your head, you begin to fall over. Okay, one more breath. On the exhale, release. Ah, and shake it out, right? We notice we just kind of like, Whoa. so make sure you're not over exaggerating this muscular engagement, like where you're stepping up. Notice up for this side, step into your right foot, push down, engage, toes, bend the left knee, toes go just behind, left toes go just behind the right toes. You're going to feel the tops of your feet pressing in like you're going to feel your ankles stabilizing. Once you feel that, if you feel good here, like I can pretty much stay here for quite a while, you can move the knee to the left. Remember that penny or that nut. Okay, squeeze the glutes, squeeze the thigh. Core is also not just hanging out. And then engage the arms. So for me, I'm going to pull my foot into my upper thigh, push everything together. Everything lifts toward the midline up right? And then rooting down into the feet. So whoosh, it's a beautiful connection with both earth and sky. So for me, when I talk, it restricts my vocal cords, right? I have to speak. So when I stop talking, I can notice like, right at the base of my throat, how I need to just calmly release there. So just notice anywhere where you may be holding or contracting where you don't need to be. One more breath. Release. 
release on the exhale. Take a nice deep breath in as you reach the arms up. Little tiny back bend, stay there. Maybe bring our hands wide. Reach as you press down, you reach up. Slightly lift the sternum and push the hips forward. And exhale, arms down, roll the shoulders. Gonna come down onto the mat. Um, yeah, grab a block. So before we do that, just lay down on the mat and reach your arms back. Bend the knees, push the feet into the earth, engage your glutes, and just slowly begin to lift up. Push your feet into the floor, arms reach back over your head, just a nice little uh, bridge, half bridge here, just to open up the front of the hips. Slowly roll down, bring your knees to your chest, give yourself a little side to side roll. And then roll yourself right back up, okay? Just rock and roll, you can rock and roll a few times if you want. <clears throat> Now you land in boat pose. I'm gonna put this behind me just for security to remind myself not to roll my back. As soon as my back hits that hits that block, I know that I need to pull my chest up and forth. You can try that as a kind of a little trick, a little stabilizing trick. Okay, <clears throat> so we start with our hands behind our thighs, heels lift off the mat, shoulders are down our back, and we're engaging our core. Right? This is stage one, because really our thighs are not doing anything, and the fact that we're holding our thighs is not engaging our core as much. As soon as we let go, that's where all the work happens. Now that might be too much, so you can bring here. So here's stage one, here's stage two, okay? Where your arms can be out, you're engaging just enough, your feet are hovering, you're just slightly touching the floor. This is hard too, this is super hard. You're still doing all the work. The next stage is here, so you're just engaging the legs more in the the hip flexors are strengthening them. So let's get here. Five breaths max to start. Three breaths minimum if you can. You'll notice your breath start to shallow. You might start to feel warm. It's okay, you might be shaking. Take one more breath or you can do this. Cross your right foot over your left as you exhale. Hands forward. In the chest, let your head be move left to right, and come back. One more, five breaths. Get into it right away. I'm gonna count my breaths, but I want you can count yours and see how you do. Toes can be drawn towards your shin if you want a little calf action. You can be pointing it forward. Just feel what you feel. And let me try one more breath. Ooh, I'm shaking my thighs are burning. My core is on fire. Five, four, three, two, left foot over right. Pain is temporary, right? <laughs> Discomfort is temporary. Good. Mm -hmm. And come back up. Boat pose is no joke. Forearm plank is no joke. Plank pose is no joke. Those are all things to build your core. Let's just extend ourselves, our legs forward. Pull your right foot into your left thigh. Reach your right arm, or your right arms. You have two right arms, apparently. And draw your toes to your shin. Just reach forward. When you can't go anymore, reach the hands for the mat and let your chin come towards your chest. If your inner right groin is sort of like going, ah, 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 screaming, you just put something underneath your right knee. I have open hips. I do not have open shoulders, but I do have open hips. I'm going to tell you, my friends, you will gain. You don't have to be flexible to do yoga. You will gain flexibility over time. I promise you, if you keep at your practice, not like once a week, but with an active practice, lift up, you can build more, more flexibility. <clears throat> right knee, my flexibility has increased dramatically in my legs anatomically. My shoulders are, are just never going to be allowing me to do certain things over. This is what I found out about myself. Okay, so here, sit up nice and tall, left arm reaches up, turn your body towards that right knee and take the arm across. 
bring your right arm back or take the knee in the crook of that left elbow and hug it in. This is my preferred way to do it. Option C is to tuck that <clears throat> left foot underneath you for a nice twist. We're just going to do a seated twist today, no shavasana. Okay. Just an overall whole body practice. Back to center and just dip to the other side. And extend forward, take it out. Do the other side, left hook comes in. If you find yourself slumping forward, just lift your butt up and push it back or put something underneath your seat. Just sit on the lip of a, a pillow or, or a blanket. <clears throat> put us directly out in front of you, arms reach up and forward. And I want you to recognize just what's happening here. Your inner thigh is opening. If you're open like me, I don't feel it here. That's okay. You might feel it there. You might feel something if you draw your toes to your shin and maybe you can grab your feet. You might feel the thigh, the Achilles, or the back of the calf. You might feel your hamstring stretching as well. You might feel the back stretching. By folding forward, you are also compressing your belly to your thigh. So the breath is going elsewhere. Feel where the breath is going. Feel it might be going to the kidneys, to your beautiful organs, just kind of allowing them to detoxify with your breath. So breathe in deeply. Every time you blow out the air, whether it's through your mouth or your nose, you're blowing out those toxins. You're getting rid of stress. You're getting rid of the tension. So how awesome is that? Take one more breath here in this nice, beautiful forward fold. Come out of it on the exhale, draw the knee to your chest and place that foot across the right thigh. Reach the left arm back, right arm reaches up, twisting to your left. Take it across. I am not a fan of this for some reason. Feels like it's just buckling my elbow, so I like hugging my knee. It gives me a little stretch in my left outer hip. Love that a lot. Tucking the, I oh, forgot to do that. I like to tuck it. If you're tucking, it feels a little bit like pigeon. Make sure both sitting bones are on the mat, however. So if you're doing one of these little crunchy thing, mm -mm. send that foot back out. Just because I say you can doesn't mean you need to. And come back to center, shake it out. We're going to come right back into that seated posture we began in. Take that block, put it underneath your hips or bolster or blanket. Forget when we started. I think we're a little over here, but I talked a little bit, so it's okay. Five minute, seven minute talk, 32 minute practice. <laughs> okay, shrug your shoulders. So we're just gonna do a, uh, the spinal warm up that I normally do to warm up. You can cool down with it. And I like this cool down, so we'll do that here. Again, just hitting all components of ourselves, our side body, our front and back body, our top and bottom body from the top tips of our toes to the crown of our head. That's holistic and be mindful all the way through of what we're thinking, what we're feeling and how we can adjust all of those parts all at once, right? Bring your hands together, not all at once. <laughs> Palms forward, lift it up and then flip them over, press the knuckles away, come into that nice little um, cat position here, seated, inhale, kind of seated cow, if you will, exhale cat. Use your core to push all the air out just like we do when we're on our hands and knees. Inhale, chest is forward, open it up, exhale. Arms reach, left arm down, right arm reaches up, extend over to your left side. And you can look down, you can cup your head, whatever you need to, to feel the stretch down that right side of your body. Go back to center and tip it to the other side. With frequent practice, I'm talking like at least, you know, three times a week. And if that's too much, just practice, you know, five to 10 minutes, three times a week. And come back to center, turn to your left. <clears throat> Breathing, you lengthen, exhale, you twist. Shoulders are relaxed and down. And twist to the other side. 
So again, the spine moves in six directions, right? Six planes, forward and back, side to side, and into a twisting motion. And some parts of the spine, like the middle of the back, don't work to, they don't move as much. <clears throat> so we want to try to think about alignment as much as possible, um, especially in the neck region. So just be mindful of that. Come back to center, take your hands behind you, clasp one more time, knuckles are down, chest opens. Let that heart sing here. And release and bring those palms back to your center. <clears throat> so palms together and Anjali Mudra. Anjali means heart. We're taking the thumbs to the center of our chest. So where our heart center is, <clears throat> you can bow your chin to your chest and come back to that intention that you set for yourself earlier, that word. Is it still valid? Is it accurate? Did you practice with that intention today? Does it make sense to utilize that intention moving forward through the rest of your day? And as you breath in, exhale it out. And slowly open your eyes. Yeah. So thank you for practicing with me today and for being open to the whole of what yoga is. I hope this practice helped you, you know, have you see that it's not, yoga is not just a physical practice. It's a mindful based practice. It's a felt experience. It's a breathing practice and it's a way to build our, a way to build ourselves toward a more intuitive center. So it's just cultivating a deeper relationship with ourselves. How cool is that? All right. Honoring this practice, honoring yourself, honoring each other in this practice of yoga. Come to the center of your forehead. Take a nice deep breath in. Exhale. Namaste.